On the 9th of March, 1862, the USS Monitor went from a rushed experiment to a resounding success, and the United States Navy was all too happy to shell out for more vessels of this type. The Confederate States of America was attempting to ramp up its production of ironclad warships, whether this be through conversions or new builds. And the United States Navy realized that it needed to counter this new threat and do it on a much larger scale with ships that were more successful in design. As Monitor was nearing completion in early 1862, Ericsson offered to construct more vessels of this type, though of an improved design, which was really what Ericsson wanted Monitor to be, but Monitor's design had to be botched in order to be completed within the 100-day time span. Ericsson had made this offer because he caught wind of a plan that the United States Navy was working on in the background, as in December of 1861, they asked for an investigation into a Monitor-type vessel with two turrets. During this investigation, the United States Navy would also take a look at the options of turrets available to them, which at the time, of course, was the Ericsson turret being put on the Monitor, and the Coles turret, which was being used in Britain. Ericsson and his partners would set their own case before the Naval Department, and of course, these would outline the flaws of the Coles turret while showing off the pros of the Ericsson turret, though the flaws of the Ericsson turret and the pros of the Coles turret were largely ignored, because if these were included, the Ericsson turret would look worse. As a result of the arguments placed forward by Ericsson and his partners, the United States Navy would cease their investigations into the Twin Turreted Monitor temporarily, and they would also suspend investigations into the Coal Turret, and they would dedicate themselves to Ericsson's updated Monitor design, only if Monitor proved successful in battle. In the meantime, the U.S. Senate formed a naval committee which was tasked with investigating how many ironclads the Navy would need over the upcoming years, and how much money this would cost. The committee initially said 20, though this was eventually hacked down to 12. The amount of money necessary to construct these 12 ships depended on the design, and so Senator Hall asked the Secretary of the Navy, Wells, what design the United States Navy would be going with. Since they had three experimental warships under construction, Wells replied on the 7th of February 1862 saying that no design was being dedicated to until the successes and failures of each design was tested in battle. Most eyes by this point were resting on the monitor, since it was clearly going to be completed first. With all of this in mind, Ericsson got to work on an improved monitor design, and since there was no 100-day construction time cap on this design, he could make it as efficient as possible without the threat of delays. The first issue that had to be addressed was the hull shape, as Monitor's hull was largely comprised of flat plates to ease construction. In the case of the new ship, it would have traditional hull lines underneath the water. This meant that hull plates would be curved, for better hydrodynamics. When Monitor underwent its first sea trials in late February of 1862, the rudder design proved rather ineffective at turning the ship, and modifications had to be made before Monitor went to Hampton Roads. Though these modifications worked, it was decided to completely redesign the rudder system for the new class of Monitors. The hull's length underneath the water at the stern of the ship was extended, and most of the propeller shaft on this new ship was concealed, with the propeller protruding immediately from the hull, and just after this, the new rudder was installed. This rudder had a more streamlined shape, and it was not as long as monitors, but it was slightly taller. The upper hull was also slightly redesigned at the stern to allow for a better flow of water, so rather than being a straight shelf, it curved slightly upwards. Speaking of the upper hull, the upper hull's overhang at the bow and stern was also altered. At the bow, it would have a 16-foot overhang, compared to the 14-foot overhang aboard Monitor, while the stern would have a 25-foot overhang, compared to the 32-foot overhang aboard Monitor. All of these improvements to the hull design would result in this nearly 400-ton heavier warship being one knot faster than Monitor, with the exact same propulsion machinery being installed. Speaking of the increased mass of the ship, this brings us to the armor and armaments. The armor scheme was largely the same as that of Monitor. The main belt at the waterline was 5 inches thick, the turret would be increased to 11 inches compared to the 8 inches aboard Monitor, and the pilot house would be reduced to 8 inches compared to the 9 inches on Monitor, but the pilot house was redesigned. There was no method of communication between the pilot house and the turret aboard Monitor. 
There is a myth that the ship had communication tubes that didn't work, but there's no evidence of this. For the new class, the pilot house would be relocated to the top of the turret to ease the method of communication between the ship's captain and the gunnery officer. There was a stationary 12-inch in diameter vertical shaft that ran up the center of the ship and connected to a platform at the bottom of the pilot house. The turret would rotate around this 12-inch shaft, and the pilot house itself would remain stationary. As for the ship's armament, Ericsson resorted back to his initial order for the monitor, and this would be two 15-inch smoothbore guns. Initially, Ericsson looked into the Rodman 15-inch smoothbore, but disliked this weapon, and so Dahlgren designed a 15-inch smoothbore that would be used instead. The same issue that plagued Monitor with the 15-inch gun would start to plague the Passaics, as the 15-inch gun was a difficult weapon to produce in a fast amount of time. So, upon completion, most of the new ships would have one 15-inch gun and one 11-inch gun. The only vessel that was completed with both 15-inch guns was the 10th one in May of 1865. Another feature regarding the armaments that had to be improved was the gun port shields. As a board monitor, these hung down from the ceiling, and they swung inboard, which meant that at any given time, only one gun could be drawn. The new gun shield design would connect to the ceiling and floor, and it would form a U-shape on its side. These would have to be rotated inboard, and both could be opened at the same time, and the threat of them becoming jammed had been decreased. An issue that had to be addressed with this class of ships was the vulnerability of the turret ring, as the turret had to be jacked up one inch before rotation could commence, and this meant that fragments could get jammed under the turret and disable its ability to rotate. A 15-inch tall iron band would be installed, connecting to the deck, and this would wrap around the turret, completely protecting the ring. Once Monitor was in service in early March of 1862, it had made its first trip from New York to Virginia, where it was realized the ventilation system was inadequate. The new class would receive a few more air blowers, and they would be of an improved design, making them slightly more powerful, and this did help with the issue a little bit. It was also decided to add a full-blown funnel for the boiler exhaust in order to keep smoke clear of the turret. Another improvement was the freeboard, as Monitor's freeboard allowed water to flow over the deck even in calm seas. So, the Monitor's freeboard of 19 inches forward and 17 inches aft would be adjusted to 30 inches forward and 18 inches aft on the new design. With the design having been improved and finalized, and the Monitor having proved a success in battle, contracts were given at the end of March 1862 for 10 ships of the new class. Each ship would cost about $250,000 to construct. These ships would be named Comanche, Catskill, Conestoga, Lehigh, Montauk, Nahant, Nantucket, Passaic, Patapsco, and Weehawken. The first ship, Passaic, would be completed in late November of 1862, while the final ship, Comanche, was not completed until May of 1865. While this class of monitor was not the most successful used during the American Civil War design-wise, they were the most active and are considered to be the backbone of the United States Navy from late 1862 to the end of the war. With that having been said, there is nothing more to add on to this topic for today. So, if you have learned something new, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.